Hi everyone, I'm Preston with Grain Weevil. In this video, I'll be giving you a complete overview of our first ever production robot system package. And it consists of really five main components that you see laid out here in the truck bed. The robot itself, our robot controller, our bin camera system, the robot charger, and also our winching system that you see here behind me as well. I'll begin with everyone's favorite part of the system, the robot itself. And I am also super excited to introduce you to the robot, which is our first ever production model designed to do the hard work inside of the bin for you. So the robot measures 26 inches in length from front handle to back of the anti-flip wing tip, 24 inches from the sides of the wing tip, but only 20 inches from the sides of the body here and about 12 inches high. The robot weighs about 50 pounds uh, right on the dot and it is a fully electric system. Um, so these two auger drive systems here are coupled to gearboxes and electric motors that are then powered by a permanently installed 24 volt battery. Now the entire robot itself, the body gaskets, the gearboxes, the power ports and charge port are all dust sealed and tight. Um, so that way we have a minimum risk of uh, any issues of dust intrusion or any issues of electronics being exposed to the elements that you're going to experience inside of the bin. Um, the robot has a runtime of about an hour and can charge in 30 minutes with the standard charger um, and all the way down to 15 minutes with our su optional supercharger um, that'll be an upgrade as part of the robot system um, package. Um, now you'll notice on the robot itself, we have a numerous amount of accessories and features built in um, to the robot. I'll just kind of start by going around and highlighting some of the key features, uh, starting with our front handle. This handle is used to carry the robot and transport the robot, um, as well as hook um, onto with the winching system to bring it up to uh, the hatch door of the bin. Um, just up from there, you'll notice our front service light. This light works really well inside of the bin and helps illuminate the work area, especially when you're driving uh, from the camera system that I mentioned. Um, as we go around the robot, we have our two D-ring clips on either side for attaching accessories to the top of the robot. Around the back of the robot, you'll notice our anti-flip wings that I mentioned. These are to help us prevent flipping over by engaging with the grain and helping kind of spread out the stabilization uh, of the overall robot. If we look at the bottom of the robot, you'll notice that we have a pretty clean design on the bottom um, with where our gearbox is attached to the body that then integrate directly into our auger drive system here. Uh, the robot operates as a skid steer or a zero turn mower, um, basically by differential steering of running one auger faster than the other to turn and then obviously running them in the uh, corresponding directions to go forward and backwards. And we'll kind of dive into how that looks with the controller here in a second. But to look at the back side of the robot here, we have a few other key um, components that are part of the accessories, um, starting with our scoop shovel. Now this shovel has been a big game changer for the design and helping us move grain. As the robot drives forward, this acts as a mud flap, disengaging with the grain. And when we go in reverse, it folds down and fully engages with the grain, allowing you to move grain wherever you want to in the bin. Um, as part of the scoop shovel design, it is uh, removable with this, uh, this pin as well as a integrated secondary light bracket. So if there's a situation where you're focusing on a leveling an area on the bin and you don't want to blind the camera, you can bring this light and mount it back here, having it um, pointed in the direction that you're trying to illuminate. As part of this as well, we have our integrated eyelet um, to allow us to hook on to our portable winch system to be able to tether or winch the robot back from within inside the bin um, or while you're operating to explore if there's any potential crusts or bridging. Um, that way the robot can get back if there's ever an issue in there. Um, similar to the scoop shovel, um, our wings also have a foldable um, pin design that allows us to squeeze into tighter entry areas that are very common um, in older bins. So that's simply just done by removing these two spring-loaded pins. 
and folding the wings back, bringing again that overall size of the robot down to 20 inches that we found to be able to fit into almost any hatch door um, out there. Now, permanently built into the robot um, is our on-off switch. It's simple, just on-off toggle uh, switch here, as well as our dust-proof charging port. Um, this does come with an integrated cover that is removed um, and then gives you access to where you plug the charger directly into. Um, and even with this cover off, this charger is fully dust sealed. Again, keeping all the elements and dust and nasty things that can happen inside of the grain bin out of the important uh, enclosed part of the robot. Now, like I mentioned, it's primarily manually controlled. We will have some semi-autonomy features and functionalities built into the robot um, when it is released. But again, for most tasks other than leveling, you will be manually controlling the robot via our robot controller. Now this controller was designed uh, in-house um, by our team and was really designed with the use case in mind. So we have a ruggedized, robust design, carbon fiber faceplate, all buttons, joysticks, connections, ports are all sealed. Um, we are using you know, big joysticks and big buttons that allow you to use gloves um, when you're controlling it on those cold, chilly fall days after harvest or you know, those early spring days um, when you're trying to break up crust. Now, with the high-powered radios in the controller, you can really operate uh, robots in any bin on your bin site. Now to operate this remote, it's very, very simple. All you do is simply turn on the power button until you see a red LED light. You use our navigation buttons on the left here to select your robot specific ID until we get to the correct one, which for this robot is ID number eight. So if we click the select, we will now be connected to this robot and able to control it via the joysticks and our different drive modes that we have in the controller. Now, once it's connected and the robot is inside the bin, you will then be ready to drive the robot. Now, for this demonstration today, I'll only focus on our manual drive mode. So to get to your manual drive mode setting, you'll make sure that the scroller is on manual drive. Again, hit your select button, and you will then see your manual drive screen here. For the robot speed, you can simply adjust this by hitting select and increasing the speed with the up arrow and decreasing the speed of the robot with the down arrow. We recommend starting out at a moderate pace of about 40 or 50 percent speed um, to get going until you get comfortable with the robot. Now by default, the robot will be in zero turn mode. And what zero turn mode means is to control the robot, just like a zero turn mower, both joysticks going forward will make the robot drive forward. One joystick forward and one joystick back will make the robot turn in that corresponding direction. And same goes for reverse and the other turn direction. Now, it's really gonna be a feel thing. Once you get your robot and your controller and get inside the grain bin, you'll be able to pick it up within just a few minutes. Now, while you're operating the robot within the bin, you will be able to have the ability to get battery data from the robot so that way you know when it's time to wrap up and get back to the hatch door to bring the robot out. Now, again, the workhorse robot and the controller is just the first part of the overall package that you need to successfully and efficiently operate um, the robot at a bin site. Um, so now we'll jump over to our camera system and dive into how we visually see the robot in the bin and be able to control it from the comfort of our truck cab. Now again, because we are a primarily fully manually system, we have to be able to visually see the robot to operate it. So we've designed a camera package that allows you to operate the robot while again sitting down in the comfort of the ground, outside of the bin, outside of the elements. Now our bin, bin camera system comprises of three primary elements, which is the video controller to be able to operate the camera, our camera base that houses the uh, antennas and the radio that sits outside the hatch door, and then our camera dome that attaches up inside of the bin, um, actually in the elements. Now this camera is a high definition, low latency camera 
um, that allows you to pan, tilt, and zoom inside the bin, being able to look at almost all areas in the bin, um, again, without being able to be uh, exposed to the elements there. Now to get the camera set up, you'll transport the camera base and the dome in this nice protective hard case. Once you bring this case up to the top of the bin to the hatch door, you will start by assembling the camera by removing the camera base, attaching the antennas, and attaching the camera connector cable. You will then set this aside just outside of the hatch door and then connect up your camera dome with the same connector cable on the back of the dome. Once that is connected, you'll then reach the camera dome up into the bin just inside the hatch door and connect it to the bin roof by utilizing the magnet built into the top here. From there, you'll then come back down to the ground or the truck cab where you will then connect the camera um, via the camera video uh, controller here. The right joystick of the camera video controller co controls the pan tilt of the camera and the left joystick controls the zoom just in the up and down axis. Now you can also control the camera by utilizing the touch screen on the front of the controller as well as some of the other camera settings in the camera menu um, as well. But again, this controller allows you to um, control as well as adjust the camera uh, from the ground, again, in the comfort of the truck. And that really gives you an overview of our bin camera system and how to operate and set that up. Now that we've covered the two primary pieces of control, let's go ahead and go over our charging system as well as how to properly charge the robot. Now again, for our charging of our robot, we have two different options. First is our standard charger that comes, as you can guess, standard with the package, is what you see here. This is a robust, um, waterproof uh, charger that can run off of 110 or 220 volts and will charge the robot in 30 minutes. Now we also have our upgraded supercharger option that utilizes two standard chargers in an enclosure that can bring that charge time down to 15 minutes. Now to charge the robot, it's very, very simple. We simply, again, remove our dust cover from the charge port on the robot. We then plug in our standard charger to the proper power supply. We then take the connector and plug it into the robot charge port until it is seated all the way against the robot. From there, all you do is you simply turn on the robot and the charging will begin. You can verify the charge status of the robot on the back of the charger by looking at the charge status LEDs. The yellow LED will indicate that it, the robot is currently charging and the green LED will indicate that the charge is complete. Once the charge is complete, we simply just reverse our operation. We turn our robot off, disconnect our charger, and the, reconnect our dust cover. And this robot is ready to go back into operation. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what the entire standard package uh, looks like. And if you need any more information, be sure to reach out to your local Benesis provider or check out our website at grainweevil.com.